my mom uh, seeing me covered in blood. I, I even had a conversation with her the day. She's seen the picture. She knows yeah, this picture. Yeah, yeah. And I, I told her before that that's gonna, what's going to happen, that she's going to see some pictures. I saw a lot of photographers uh, there. And I told her that she's going to see a picture, that I'm going to be covered in some blood, and that it's not mine, that I wasn't there, I wasn't endangered, I just came to help. So I had to tell her that. The people shopping in Konstantinovka today were calm and unsuspecting. The first sign they had of danger was the terrible whistle of income. But by then it was too late. 17 were killed by the Russian missile, including a child. Many more were wounded. I'm going to take you for a little walk, and I'm going to show you where a bad thing happened to good people a few weeks ago. There was a good shawarma shop down here as well. A barber shop, a tombstone maker. And still three weeks later, they're cleaning it up. 17 civilians. The day it happened, later that night, I see that now famous photo. The girl in the middle, my friend, Yaroslava. It was over. The first thing I felt when I looked was pride, because that was my friend. That was my friend helping on her day off the market, maybe buying some food, some laundry detergent. She told me stories. More ambulance come, more volunteers. Some guys had an aptechka and a first aid kit. They didn't know what to do with it, but they threw it out of the car. Um, but she was here. And everybody that could be saved would be saved. Just without emotion, do your job. It's now like three weeks ago, maybe? Yeah. Um, I guess. Maybe later that day or that night. Um, I don't want to say famous, but it's, you know, very popular picture. You were carrying a casualty with people and I seen you and I knew it was you. I knew you do your job. That's it. So anybody that could be saved would be saved. It wasn't going to be, it wasn't going to be because of stupidity that something. Yeah, everyone, every person uh, who was injured and who could be helped were helped there. Uh, there are a couple people also like me uh, with the backpacks, medical backpacks, back, uh, medical backpacks who helped, and they were people with evax who came and took the injured, and uh, <coughs> some guys uh, in a car they stopped and throw an ifac out of the window. They had no idea how to help, but they wanted, so they throw the ifac. It, to the where the medics were and just went uh, went uh, where they were going everyone there was saved the only people who died uh, were the people who were inside those small shops and those uh, small shops they burned really quickly and they could be taken out and uh, they could get help only after the fire was uh, stopped and the firemen the firefighters came right away right away but then when they put the fire out, those people were already dead, not only mutilated from the explosion, but also heavily burned, heavily burned. But, uh, and yeah, yes, that was the first time, like, in my life, I took a person's skin and it just came off. You you take, like, the hand and it's coming out, uh, off of the person, like, that's, like, from a snake. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a medical professional. A professional. I wasn't a medic before any of that. I never worked uh, in emergency situation, in, in some kind of situation. I wasn't a firefighter or something. And it's new to me too. And yes, after that, I asked myself a question. Wh why am I not bothered? I, I went from the market. I Everything was finished there. I went from the market 
and I had to get water. The guys from my troop, they brought me water and uh, left it in a car and I needed the car keys to take my water back to, to the apartment. And I asked myself a question, why am I not bothered? But no one's gonna be alive again and not dead because I don't drink. No, no one's gonna be healthier because I don't eat or because I cry. And I, I asked myself this question previously, a uh, couple months before that, uh, there was a shelling of, of the village uh, we were in on positions. And after the shelling was finished, I come out uh, of the basement and I asked the locals, I, I take my backpack, I asked the locals if there's someone down and they show me like on the end of the street, there is a man who is lying down. I go there and there is no head. It, it, the explosion was like a meter, two meters near, just the shell hit two meters near him. There was no head, so some some left of the, of the body, but no head. And I, I covered him with an emergency blanket and went back and ate my lunch because I was hungry, because he's not going to be not dead uh, because I don't eat. No, no, no one's going to be safer. And why, why are we not bothered? We bothered enough to come here. We bothered enough to take our asses from the sofa and come here. Uh, we we were raised to uh, we were raised uh, in preschool and school and by parents by society. We were raised to show compassion. That's normal. We were raised with that. Uh, but uh, compassion, it's like when when you teach a child not like to crush the bug because it's it's also alive. Uh, don't don't kill the bugs or like I don't know the birds. Some kids kill cats. I I'm not sure. I never killed someone as a child. No, I was not a murderer. Frogs. It's popular in Ukraine. They kill frogs. They they blow them with some sticks. Like the, the, I, I never killed anyone. But the ch children, they are taught to show that compassion to uh, something living. They are taught that like the death, like a concept is bad and being alive is good and being sick is bad. And they are taught to show that they support someone who is like dying or sick, any living form. But uh, they, we are not in preschool anymore. Uh, showing compassion is not enough for a grown up. It's good for kids. It's not good enough for a grown up. Action. You're, you, yeah, yeah, you take action, you do shit, you do grown-up shit, we did grown-up shit, we, uh, took away, we took away everything we had, we needed, and we came here to do real shit. So sitting on a sofa and feeling bad, feeling sorry, it's not enough. And, and we think that it's, we, we should be doing that, that we should be crying, that we should be sad, that we should be like dramatic, not eating, we shouldn't. We do the grown up. We should thing. make Instagram posts with candles and yeah. but we, five hundred days since Mariupol. We were not doing we we shouldn't be doing that. We we came we bothered enough to came here and after we did that, after we came here, we after we started doing our job we learned we learned new skills. I'm thirty years old. I was never a medic. I learned through a year how to do it. And I'm pretty sure I know how to do it. I know how to do my job and I do it well. 30 years old, that's like totally different profession. People, they like make decision to become like medical professionals when they're 15 and they they learn through their life. I had to learn a lot through a year. So, so did you. Yeah. So, so did you. And I didn't plan this. No, no it one just did. happened. Okay. I didn't. Do you well. want this? Yes. So so did I. So we bothered enough to come here. We bothered enough to learn how to do our job, and we're doing it. Why are we supposed to be bothered about what's happening? And the other part a part of this, I talked to you yesterday. People are scared of the stuff they don't understand, like the witches, the aliens, uh, the the ghosts, uh, mutilated hands and legs, because they do not understand. It's like something they they don't know. They they don't know how to deal with it. This is why they are scared. We know how to deal with it. We a person sells, sees like a, a, a shot from a horror movie, a mutilated hand, a leg. What we see is uh, us doing our job well up to stabilization point, so he doesn't bleed. Stabilization point doing his job well, so they close the vascular. The vascular surgeon do, does his magic, so he wouldn't bleed out. Furthermore, the hospital doing their job well. The rehabilitation center. 
uh, doing their job uh, well. Uh, the putting of their artificial leg and stuff, we see a person in one year walking up and about, even coming back to the regiment where he was. That's what we see. We are not scared of the unknown because we know. We know what's going to happen. We know the consequences. We see the wound, whatever that might be. And we know what's going to happen with the guy. Yes, sometimes we are upset. I am upset when I see a person uh, with a tourniquet who doesn't need a tourniquet like for eight hours. That's upsetting because I know his leg's going to be cut. That's, that's a fact. That, 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 and it upsets me. Uh, we had a guy, he came like in five o'clock in the morning to civilization point and he was conscious, absolutely conscious, absolutely aware of what was going on. And I was putting a catheter in his uh, hand and he looked at me and says, guys, you should uh, make me go to sleep before you cut my leg. That, that was upsetting. He was talking to me, he was absolutely conscious, it wasn't just a body. It was a person who already, he had the tourniquet for like uh, eight hours or maybe even nine. The leg was black, uh, up up here, uh, up uh, the, the approximately, mostly high, high tourniquet possible on the leg. So his leg is going to be absolutely, totally amputated and the part that was injured was the, the, the lower part. Yeah. Below the knee. Yeah, below the knee. So it was, it was a possibility that he could be, uh, could have only get cut uh, lower the, the knee, the easier artificial leg. It's simple, but that's a fact. Yes, I am upset, but why, why, why am I supposed to be bothered that? That was not my responsibility. Uh, it I wasn't it doesn't one, help you tomorrow. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't the one who taught him how to use the tourniquet. I wasn't the one who sent him there. I wasn't the one who organized the evacuation for like eight hours. I, I, I wasn't. Why, why am I supposed to be sad? How it's going to help him? In no way. His legs not coming back from my being sad. Uh, no other doctor or medical personnel is not going to feel better because I showed them how upset I am. Mm. No one's going to do their job more efficient. And even if someone like his the commander came, he's not going to also do his job more efficient by me showing him that I am upset. No, no, one, no one's going to be better for me being upset. Maybe, maybe I'm bottling up my feelings, maybe you're too, but uh, we, sh we should be doing that by doing our jobs. But I don't think so, because... Uh... Uh, I come from a culture that glorifies war because we have not really seen war in 70 years, 80 years. So I don't think so. I think that uh, maybe it's possible in in five, ten years later, uh, some of our friends will, they will beat their children and will not be good husbands. Uh, maybe, maybe you or me, we will struggle in relationships or whatever, but that's not my concern now. Uh, I really don't, I don't care. Um, I think that, I think if it helps us for six months, for three months, for two months, whatever we do is good. But, but I, I have been, I have been in conflict with some of my colleagues because uh, I'm totally okay with what's, what's happening sometimes. And uh, some of them over several months are losing their mind. Uh, and uh, they are good people. They are absolute professional, like good medical people. Um, but I'm thinking, okay, that was that. Now we can do this. And yeah. uh, but sometimes I thought to myself, is this is this wrong? When they come running to the medic house to help, and the guy is dead, and uh, Dima is running with epinephrine and gonna stick the guy and i'm thinking right away why are you wasting that fucking epinephrine you have to try to do something like when people are watching like try to do yeah. something and then come to them later two minutes later and say i'm sorry we tried yeah, you, can, you cannot just say when so and i learned that experience to bring to you uh to zaparisha from uh that just fuck around a bit with each other talk and then go to the guys and say i'm sorry there is absolutely no chance you're going to explain the triage process no. to a civilian. You you shouldn't be there. Or to a soldier. 
or or to soldiers who say save my friend you can't say no he's dead if you have time you you should take him aside and come back come back in five minutes or two minutes if the situation um you know what's really wrong uh, when you're like an adrenaline junkie uh, when I know the firefighters, uh, they in United States, when a new one comes to a troop, uh, they have a serious punishment. When a new guy says it's been a quiet, a quiet shit, or that he is bored, or yes. something like that, that's serious shit. They are punished for that. Uh, they are being ridiculed for that and made like clean the firehouse or stuff. I don't know what they do, mm -hmm. but that that is really bad. Being the the medical junkie, the person who says, "Oh, no injury today. That's so boring. That's so upsetting. That's bad. That's what you should never say, never say." And this is really crazy shit. But not being upset that someone died. Where we first meet at the apartment, uh, and I give I give you and Christina supplies and your other friend, uh, my friend Dima and I share that apartment, and we were coming home from Bakhmut. And in Slovyansk, we see big smoke. So we're like, let's go. And uh, I was the only medic uh, who, there was the police and the medic and two missiles hit Slovyansk. We, we picked one smoke to drive to. Uh, it hit the middle of the building so we could enter the other sides. We search everything. Uh, we can't find any people. Uh, and then the medics come and it was an S3 stay and the, there was no fire for like 20 minutes, it, it built. Uh, but we look for people, we search everything, the fire people come, the police, we all work together. And then the then the ambulance showed, because there was two attacks. So um, there was no, we could find no wounded. Uh, and then at the end, uh, like me and Dima were looking at each other and, and it's ridiculous. They say, okay, uh, everything is good here. Uh, let's go get shawarma. And why, uh, not? why not? You know, why, because, why, not? why should we not eat? Nobody died. Nobody got hurt. Thank God. Uh, even, even if someone died or you uh, some found some, someone wounded and gave him help, why you still you have to eat? Why you not supposed to, to to eat? You're, no one would be healthier if you did not eat. Well, what's the point? But when a missile hit civilians, for you, many many people were hurt, uh, and you did your job. Uh, Everyone who could be saved was saved. Why? Why? What am? What am I supposed to be doing? Uh, for what? It's it's like I'm not a big fan of like funerals. It's not mm. my thing. I I don't always understand that. Lots of tradition for me, and I'm not Christian, so I I don't understand a lot of that. The priest, the staff. Well, I all, all always participate the way it should be done for the parents. Uh, Absolutely. No, yes. no, I never show disrespect. Absolutely. No chance I'm doing that. If he's badly injured, his family is going to come, his family and friends, and they will stay in the hospital. That's other kind of ceremony when you wait in the hospital. That's no point of doing that. No point. But people still come. They come to, to the ER and they stay, stay there for hours when there is no point. And the doctor said, there's going to be no news till morning. People stay. That, that's their kind of so ceremony, that's their consolement. But I don't know those people. I, I'm not the one who, who is supposed to be doing the ceremony. Mm. I, I cannot be held in a ceremony every time someone is injured or, or died. I, I, I won't have time to do anything else. No. Absolutely, no, no time. So, and people who feel bad for not doing anything they, they would like to have some ceremonies. Uh, they post pictures uh, and stuff, they look at them. I, I would never like understand a person who seriously looks at, at those picture, pictures of mutilated bodies. That's weird for me. If you don't have to look at them, why are you doing that? What's the point? But People like that shit online. They like watching us kill Peters and, and they like yeah. watching that Telegram shit. Yeah. They, that gives them like the sense of their part of something and make a donation. That's much better than just watching that stuff. That mm. that's really creepy for me. And the other part of uh, w what we talked about yesterday about being bad, about showing that that stuff. 
to people because uh, we need to show that stuff. Mm -hmm. We we need to show that to tell people what we are doing. Uh, we need that to get donations. We need that to get uh, medical equipment. Uh, we need. I'm I'm not a fan uh, of my mom uh, seeing me covered in blood. I I even had a conversation with her that day. She's seen the picture. She knows yeah. this picture. Yeah, yeah. And I I told her before that that's gonna what's gonna happen. That she's gonna see some pictures. I saw a lot of photographers uh, there. And I told her that she's gonna see a picture that I'm gonna be covered in some blood, and that it's not mine. That I wasn't there. I wasn't endangered. I just came to help. So I had to tell her that. And I am not a fan of someone seeing me covered in blood. That that's not nice. But I I know that what I'm. I have to post it. I have to show it. Uh, I have to respond to people who are asking me questions about what am I doing, how am I doing it. Because mm -hmm. raising awareness is a big part of what you're doing here, what I'm doing here. We've got to remind people what is happening here. Look at all the supplies you have, we are surrounded in. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's wasting really, really fast. <laughs> you have no idea. And this is uh, like this, the story I told you yesterday about the Kherson cats. And there is what uh, was a flood in Kherson. Everyone wanted to to take a cat, uh, a stray cat from Kherson. Yeah. That's there is no difference like from Shitomer cat. That's just a cat. But everyone wanted to take a cat from Kherson. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they created media like a campaign. It wasn't an intentional. I'm pretty sure no one was doing that on purpose. But all the photographs of the cats, uh, like in water, and all the videos of the rescuers saving the cats. They even had like nice reports where where they said that they like evacuated ten people and six cats, <laughs> and they counted the they evacuated cats. So yes, all all of that content uh, created an interest. Uh, all of that uh, content created emotion, and lots of people wanted to take care of some cats uh, that. That's kind of stupid when they refuse to take other cats, not from Kherson. Not the Zaporizhia cat. Yeah, yeah, even Shelter didn't have not a Kherson cat. cat. But it's like there is no tattoo of the like Kherson. You, you, you can just wear the Zaporizhia cat and it's going to be Kherson cat. <laughs> but but still, it created uh, it created the emotion. It created, and people sometimes need emotion to do something, to make a donation to help, uh, to give away some stuff like clothes. They need that emotion. They need that like uh, mental pushing, like uh, one more uh, one more photograph is going to help him get up and do something, do some grown up shit. Because all the time he looks at the photographs and he's sad and he's posting the photographs and the candles and stuff. But something something touches him deep enough to get up and do something. And you should be doing that again, again, and again, because each time you create some images, some videos, one person out of hundred is going to be touched. One person out of hundred is going to like donate or one person of 1000 is going to come to live with some humanitarian aid. With a van. To on, help. On, only to live. One of 10,000 is going to come here, but he's going to, it's going to be on you. It's going to be on you, this guy. Every life this guy saves becoming like a volunteer, a, a paramedic is gonna come here. See your video, see your content. One of 10,000 who, who saw your video on YouTube, one of 10,000 is gonna come. But that's gonna be on you, still on you. The guy who came, the uh, guy who did shit, is gonna be still on you. So it's worth it. The other like 9,999 people are not gonna do shit. They are, they are not going to do something. They are going to post like the candles and stuff. But the one, the one, that's, that's a result, still a result. So you should, you should be doing that always. And when you ask yourself, are you a bad person for showing what's happening to benefit your charity? No, you're not. Because you're not making that to happen. You're a bad person when you make it to happen. Like when you kick. A babushka and show like you help her get up. That's bad. This has been done in the war. This, not not maybe the babushka, but uh, I'm pretty sure it, it was. But uh, Kiev DTP, they used to wrap bandage on dogs and cats 
and uh, they say, look how we're saving dogs and cats in, in Nice. And Esbu arrested them. Th that guy is done, yeah. you know. Th this that happened. That can happen. But you are not doing that. No. You are not I'm not one. kicking babushkas and <laughs> sabachkas. <laughs> no, you are not the one shooting like the missiles on civilian cities. You are not the one held in the war. So it's normal. To, Put, to... Put, Putin is making the content. Yeah. Not so, you or so, me. So you are not the one who wants to create it. So you are the one filming it. You are the one in this in this in this scenario. You are being a journalist, a documentalist uh, about what is happening. You are being the person who's gonna tell someone because uh, there is no chance like knowing someone can easily believe there is no war here anymore. There are no news, so there is no war. It, no one's reporting it. Uh, there there is nothing happening. It like me. I'm pretty sure there is nothing happening in Australia. I have no idea. I never see the news from Australia. I'm pretty sure the nature is trying to kill them all the time. That That's what I know, like the spiders and stuff, some crazy poisonous shit all the time. I'm pretty sure they're There's fighting. There's going to be Australians watching this. Yes, <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're like uh, fighting the, the nature at this moment, poisonous nature, guys. Stay strong, <laughs> I, believe, I believe in you. But I have no idea what's... what's uh, but there is another version that they are preparing to attack like the whole world and take the world domination because they are sitting quietly over there and they are really strong and resilient because of all the poisonous nature again. Mm. And, and maybe some, sometime soon they are gonna like bring the spiders uh, to attack us. I hope not, please. <laughs> I don't know what's happening in, in Australia because there are no news. and. I'm pretty sure lots of people in Europe or in the United States they can believe there is no war anymore here that it like ended somehow because uh, there are no news so you're the person delivering the news you're the person reminding uh, you're the person who shows that the war is going on and the people are injured uh, every day and they need help and they need aid all the time like you can use the tourniquet once on one leg and the next guy is gonna need the next tourniquet it's not passed on like like a torch to to any oh i was injured here now you use it no he's gonna need the next one and the next hemostatic and the next bandage uh, and the next chest seal all of the stuff is gonna be used only once so you have to continue um but what you told me yesterday i really wanted I really that's wanted to talk plane. about this. That's our plane. Yeah, that's not Peter's. Um, I just don't like them when they fly and I'm telling that to myself because it doesn't make me, make me comfortable that the plane flying. Airplane is like, one of the most scary things for me because you don't hear it often. Uh, I, it was like two, maybe three times when I was near where the plane shelled. I, it's not like near, near. No, it wasn't. I just heard it. And it's such an uh, uncomfortable feeling. Like I think it's like diving when uh, all all the context uh, contents of your body are like moved inside. I don't know. It's really really uncomfortable. So I I know the planes fly here, and I hear them every day. And I still repeat myself that it's our plane. Our plane. Because it's it, it it's scary. I don't know how I'm going to travel after the war, really, because <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to be ready to go to the airport. Sometimes as a foreigner, there's things I'm scared to talk about with other foreigners. Some guys came here and they're like, yeah, I'm bored. This rotation sucks. No work is good work. Uh, we had a guy with a bullet in his ass, just soft tissue. It was simple, but everybody had a laugh and uh, we all kind of do like rock, paper, scissors. Who will who will check for penetration in other areas and Igor had to do the but this was our entertainment for the day that's your idea of, of entertainment yeah it, putting a finger in, in some ass guy's ass, ass uh, okay. in front of like 20 people ice creams better just ice creams stick better to the ice cream it's not that I want bad things to happen but it's like why can't I help? uh and it took a long time mentally to for me to accept this yeah have you ever experienced this yeah like, uh sometimes I, I i don't work at a stabilization point i'm a combat medic uh, in a troop 
and I come to work in stabilization point when I have uh, when I'm done with my duties here, when my guys are not in positions, or uh, when I have time and chance. Uh, I come to the stabilization point to work because yes, there is a difference. Like here, uh, there is a guy who's telling you, "Oh, I like I ate some bad shit and I'm shitting badly." and i need a pill and you go over there uh, and there are like 20 people with contusion coming at the same moment uh, yeah and i I, th I think to myself yeah why i'm not why am i there not there not here why 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 that moment this moment uh, why am i doing that not that but every time i think about that i come to the to the same answer there is nothing there you, you saw that too you ever ask me what it means no. It's a Saxon, English Saxon, and it means that destiny is inevitable. Destiny is inevitable. Yes. Uh, there are novels of Cornwell, uh, Saxon Chronicles. That's uh, the, the the phrase from there. The main like guy always said that. And I end up where I have to be. That's my place. If I'm here now, that's where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be doing my job. I, I, I can like it. I don't, cannot like it. I'm still doing my job as best I can. And there are like, uh, I even heard about doctors who came here and they end up in like um, treating the sick, not injured, but just sick soldiers. And they end up there and they don't like it. And they say, oh, I want to be going and saving lives. Uh, but that's what you do. You you cure the, the, the sick people, you prescribe stuff and you're good at that. You're a good doctor, you're a good therapist, diagnosed, why, why, why change it? Why do something you don't know how to do? Yeah. Because, it, because it's not prestige, because you, you have the idea of being a hero. I, I hate that most people have the idea of being, of, uh, being a hero at war, the civilians. I mean, they have like the idea that we all are some kind of heroes, superheroes, we're just people, regular people doing regular stuff uh, every day we have our duties uh, we get the same sicknesses as anyone else and as i like to say if you died a hero if someone died a hero something went wrong there is no place to be a hero on war if the operation was planned fine if uh, everything was the evacuation the operation the um, walkie talkies everything was working fine all the, the preparation room, was yeah. done right the route was fine. There is no place to, to be in a hero. You come, you do your job, you come back. We should stop thinking that there is some place to be a hero in war. No, you should do your job. Do your job well. Do your job professionally. You train. You be prepared to anything. You know how to give help to anyone. That's, that's our job. That's what we should supposed to be doing. I'm not going to be saving like 10 lives a day being a medic. And I'm not upset about that. At the end, I don't think that I'm bored because I know what what it means to lose like one guy, one guy for a troop. What what a loss it is when he is injured, uh, when he's in the hospital. Uh, a lot of work is like ruining. He's a good guy. He's a cool guy, a tech guy who was responsible for drones, and he like he was like the glue sticking together all the work, and and losing him to a hospital, it's it's absolutely sad. Because uh, like feeling yourself like a queen of the world uh, and like superhero put in a tourniquet, it lasts like 10 seconds. Next, no. like six months, the guy is in hospital. Best case scenario, six months if it's an amputation. That's in thinking, even thinking that you want someone to be injured. That's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. No. You have no injuries. That's great. If someone fucked up. If someone fucked up and your 300 point, no one knows about it and or the route is bad and no one can get there. If the people who were supposed to come to your point go to that point, yeah, someone fucked up. You should talk about that. You should fix that. If on your place, like your 10 kilometers, no uh, 300, no injured, great. You're doing great job. You're doing the best job by doing nothing. Uh, war is not about one one small uh, effort. Uh, war is about the endurance. Uh, war is about resilience to stay in that situation with people you might not like, or in your case, 
people you cannot talk to even uh, in my case you know, yes yeah and and during the like the solitude uh, maybe when you don't have internet uh, the starling you cannot talk to like anyone at all so it's hard it's it's really hard and there is one person or two who speak english and, sometimes and sometimes you, but it's yeah. like not all people who speak english you like you don't you don't like them you might not this like sucks. them this sucks <laughs> you might not this really like sucks. The, their personality, but still, you're like for foreigners. You're gonna stay together, and you should be with them. And you you don't get to pick. Uh, even if you like them, I I get to pick like a friend. I get to pick someone to talk to. Mm. I I have like my options, my choices. You don't. You um, don't even get that. But you say that I have some very special relationships with certain people, uh, who speak no English, and I just sometimes I I do not. I send a message and I'm just like, uh, I send him a little video and it's like, Kagdila, motherfucker. And he knows I love him, you know? Um, I'm pretty sure they are teach you some, some foul language in Ukrainian. Uh, yeah, they Everything it, they teach you, all the words are just foul language. But, but if I'm honest, they like when I use bad English words, like when they feed me and I say, it's fucking smachno. Everybody laughs. If I can make them laugh, I don't care if they laugh at me. As long as they let trust me to do my job, I will be anything for them. But when they're on FaceTime at night with their family, they want like their children or their mother to see their friend from Canada. About the people who who come here, the foreigners who come to Ukraine, at some point uh, we were like, Russia made us believe that we were, we were like alone. Uh, we were on the outskirts of the world. No one cared. We were like nothing country, error country, what they call us, not even a real country. Not we. They made us believe we have no chance. And when people from Canada, from Australia, from from I don't know Brazil come, and it's so far away. Even when people come from some other countries, we we feel like we are not alone. We feel like we matter. We are not some small people. We were made to believe we were small, small people, funny people, uh, not important people with no real cul culture, no real language. They, they Russians never were aggressive about Ukrainians before the big war. They were not. They were belittling us, uh, laughing uh, at us, uh, ridiculing us. It's not. It's not a real language you speak. It's not a real culture, it's so it's such a funny song, not real song. And the clothes you wear, it's so funny, it's so it's like for a show, for a play, it's not real, you can't be serious. Uh, there is um, it was it is a popular notion when you spoke Ukrainian in the university, um, in a school and you started only started speaking Ukrainian uh, some like ten years ago, and the people told you are you are you really such a Ukrainian? You really are a Ukrainian. So it's like, are you are you being serious? Are you for real? It, you cannot be for real. You cannot speak Ukrainian for real because it's like it's for fun. It's for jokes. It's for TV shows, uh, funny TV shows like some comedy. It's not real language for real people, and you are not real people. You are not real nation, real country. You are just funny people who think they have a country, but you don't. And when you come, uh, you you think they laugh, laugh at you, <laughs> and they think you are the funny, f funny foreigners. But the fact is, you help us not to feel f like funny people, like little people, people who don't matter. Uh, when every time you come here, you stay here, you help. It's proof we are a real country, we are a big country. We matter in the world uh, because you come, because you want to help, because this is the right cause for for you to come. It makes us feel better. We might be laughing of the of how you say babushka, which is really funny. But uh, the fact is, we smile and we laugh because we are happy because you're here, and it's just you good news just being here. There's like I don't know a talisman because you're here because this means we're right because this means we're not small. I mean, like imagine you you fighting. Uh, a war and you're somewhere in, in some shit hole and everything looks bad and, and, and depressing and there is a guy who's coming uh, from Texas to Texas where I, I have no idea how, how, how far away is there and, and he's there 
he's there from Texas in nice uniform, in nice form. He's trained, he's fit, he's determined. He's and, experienced. Yeah, yeah. And th those guys like who were like called up to mobilize to the army like a couple months ago, they see that guy. That guy, they see that guy and they feel much better because they fight on the same side with that guy. Is that the guy? That's the guy. That's the guy you fight on the same side with. And it makes you feel better. You you feel like you feel stronger. Once you eat from the tree of knowledge, you can never unknow what what you know. And um, like you said, you said to me, you could not you cannot picture a life as a civilian now from knowing what you know. This war is really long by Ukrainians because we are part of. European history. We are part of Europe and our history is a part of Europe and we want to be a part of Europe and continue to be it and develop with them. We are Democrats. We hate the president the next uh, day we elect them. That's democracy to hate. <laughs> like We don't like, we never like the president, we never like like any uh, member of parliament or stuff. That's you. Uh, that's Europe. That That is how Europe uh, lives. We that's never... America. That's the yeah. world. Yeah, yeah, that's the world. We don't like authority. Uh, we are we are free. We are free-spirited people. We respect each other. We let each other grow as they want to be. We have different dialects of Ukrainian language, diff different food tradition, but that is all part of, of that uh, culture. <coughs> this is where we are strong, being, being different. Uh, allowing someone to be different, to be fun, to be interesting, to be not like anyone else. This is our future of our country, uh, the freedom, the rights of people, uh, the freedom to be different. And the Russians, they always want to make us the part of the empire, make us people who love their Tsar, their king, and no one, they, they, they keep a king for like hundreds of years. They had a real Tsar, then they had a revolution, and they had the leader of the Communist Party, who was still a Tsar, and who was like in total authority. And now they, the Soviet Union broke, and they had a president who's still a fucking Tsar. They always want a Tsar, and they always want anyone in some kind of authority to be a Tsar. Anyone, like the, the president of like Union of Three Houses, still a Tsar. Still a Tsar, with all authority, and you're scared of him. And you should always be scared of everyone. And you should always bow to everyone. And you should never ask any questions. You should never raise your voice. You should never think of something. This is how the school system goes. You are broken. You're broken to be silent. You are silenced if you don't want to be silent already, because you should learn that in school. This is their school. This is the Soviet system of school. You should tell what you only should be told this uh, what you said like london is the capital of great britain uh, no one was given a chance to talk about london you read the text learn some stuff tell it tell what you learn about london no you should recite the text that's what you do you what is already written for you you only learn what was already decided for you this is russia we will never want that I, I'm pretty, I hope that's the last war. I hope my kids, I, they will never take part in a war. I really hope so. I want this to happen. I want the kids I raise like a scout leader right now. I want them not to, not to be here, not to be in the army, not to be in trenches. I hope it's the last war. But I, I think there is a possibility it might be another one and another because we we cannot move the whole country <laughs> away from Russia unfortunately because it's broken uh, the the empire was broken the Soviet Union was broken and they still raised to the same thing they still have a Tsar and they still want to be an empire all the time because th this is what they are like and uh, this is a long war, but we are here, we are now where we should be, fighting alongside with uh, Vikings, uh, <laughs> I don't know, with, with anyone we, we are supposed to be fighting. I really hope some, some people who come here to fight, they will stay here, 
I, I hope so. No, no, not here, not in this shithole. I mean, like nice cities. Well, this is a nice place in the yeah. shithole. Yeah, this is a nice place, but it, I don't mean these cities. I mean the cities who are not as uh, exposed to war. N some nice places. I believe those people can make families here and stay here and build a life here. In if there is a guy coming from Texas, uh, you can uh, have some cows here as well. We like cows, cows are nice in Ukraine, there's a lot of ways uh, to make a farm, less taxes. I want Ukraine to be like international country. I want, I want like a New York in Ukraine where you can meet anyone from any country in the world, where you can speak any language, uh, try any dish. I want that for Ukraine. That's what I want. I want the, the scouts I work with. Uh, since the war started, a lot of European scout organizations gave us some free camps and jamborees. So my children, they have friends in Japan, in Korea, in Denmark, in England, in Israel. That's amazing. You've been part of the scout movement your whole life. Yeah, that's amazing. And even still. This is, this is what I want for my kids. Uh, this is what I want for them to know English, to easily communicate with anyone with anyone, to have friends in, in Korea, in Denmark, uh, to, to stay in touch, to grow up together, to have uh, similar movies, uh, similar stuff to watch. I didn't want them to watch Russian fucking uh, TV shows. They're disgusting. I want them to watch Korean movies. I, I took my children, my, my, my scout group, I took them to watch Miyazaki movies. They, they are amazing. They know and, about K-pop, they know all this stuff. And yes, and I want them to watch that, to know that, to be interested in that. This is what should they, because when they went, uh, the World uh, uh, Jam Scout Jamboree was in Korea this year, and they went there and they liked a lot of stuff there because they know that stuff like anime and the 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 books with the pictures. <laughs> I don't know the name. I I don't understand Neither that. Neither do I. I do not understand that, but I encourage that. And I think that's nice because they. This is how it should be. They should have no clue what the Russians are talking about. They should have no clue what Russians of their age are talking about. They should have a clue about Korea. They should have a clue about Britain, Denmark, Canada, uh, Brazil. This is how they should be wired to be open to the world. To not to look trust to Russia, but to look to the whole world. Yes, to visit, to travel. To know uh, what, how many percent of Russians actually were abroad. This is e easy to believe you love the Tsar because you have never seen anything else. They haven't. They haven't even left the country. They, some of them even have, haven't left the region. So, of course, they have no other option like to believe what they're told and to, do, to live like that, to be mean, to be angry. I would also be mean if I lived in Russia. That, that's like re really ho horrible to live in Russia. I would also like violence and stuff because there is no other option. There is none. I, I want the young people in Ukraine to know English, to have options, to travel, to choose uh, how to be, what to like, what not to like, uh, to have connections, to have friends, to make some international camps. Uh, and I, would, I want Ukraine to be open. For, for foreigners, for foreign projects, for new stuff, for new things. Uh, I want us to be a part of the European community once again, all the time, not uh, on some summits. No, it's, it's not what matters. It's not the declaration of being a member of the European Union. I want us to be a part of Europe in heart. And we are building that right now, this moment, this instant. We are building that connections. We are building Europe here, here in Ukraine. You build that. You, you think you just helped the war, you helped the injured. No, you built Europe here. Every guy you touched in your evac and said to him good luck, you build in Europe in him. You build a world in him. He, he knows he's gonna, he's gonna know, he's gonna tell his children. I, I always did this. I, I told you it's. It's not my job, but I bring them into Stabpunt and I should be out getting the car, moving the car, cleaning the car. But every one of them, I tried to touch them and say, and they know that there's a foreign guy there too. If they don't already know from the 300 point. That you, I are go that back. 
you're gonna be the Canadian guy in some Chateau Marie region village and he comes back injured to his family and they gather around the table and he tells the story about the Canadian guy. You are gonna be a part of a village in Chateau Marie region forever. And we're holding the line for the world and it's like, we look to Russia and it's like, fuck you. And I feel very, uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter if I'm in Chassev Yar, if I'm driving down the road and I see Bogdan ambulance and I see someone I know, or it's, it's, it's something. Yes, we're, we're building a real community. And we have had some journalists who came to a stabilization point. Uh, the, the, the guy I told you about from Brazil, uh, I'm not sure who was he working at. I, I, I don't remember his name. I took him to my apartment to sleep. I don't know his name. I, I don't have some contacts or whatever, but he's gonna know the country where some random person who speaks English uh, can offer him can his room. Yeah, because he needs it. Like for five hours, six hours, but he's gonna have a home here. And if he ever travels somewhere and choose a country, he's gonna choose a country where anyone can offer his uh, home there. And he's he was like actually a great guy because he interviewed Zelensky a couple of days before he came to a stabilization point so then he interviewed the president and slept in, in my couch and not even this apartment much worse i moved <laughs> since you that had apartment. Upgrade. that was a shit hole and he slept there so he's a great journalist uh, a great person so we are building that community and yes we're losing people a lot of them really a lot but we are gathering what what this is this is what we are gaining this is what we should be thinking about about the community about the future and the injured people who are gonna become stronger much stronger look at these videos uh, like invictus games and the people with artificial legs uh, they are stronger they even stronger than they were before the injury ukrainian they, warriors were in berlin just now they they overcame that they become new people, much stronger people, and we are gonna have uh, young people, young children who are gonna watch them. We will never have like people who shut themselves down due to some injury or sickness. Um, the, even the sick people, they, the, any unit is as strong as it as its weakest member, and we will have more strong weakest members because even people who are like sick from from the birth uh, and they will feel stronger because they will see people like them on the streets with artificial legs uh, in wheelchairs they will see them and think I'm not alone in here I'm not the only one look at them they like do pull-ups and stuff fun stuff I can join them I, I, I can join them I can be them and we will be a stronger country because the country is also as strong as the weakest member. This is the, this is why I'm not bothered or about what is happening because I it's the, the, their second birthday, their second birthday as a stronger person, as a fighter, much stronger fighter. This is the first day of their new life. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be painful as hell for some time, less painful in some time, but this is their new life when when they get a chance for a new life and they will live it and they will live it even better knowing that someone lost their life. And they will live it in their honor of much, much more interesting, useful life. Uh, I'm really proud that a lot of people are involved in volunteering more and more people are being involved uh, if in civilian life be, before like no war there is you don't know how to volunteer you don't know how to help you cannot do it by yourself that's hard that stuff you don't know how to do it you're like ashamed or scared or i don't know now this is easy to have an experience as a volunteer it's a safe experience you know where to go you can like uh, make some nets or I don't know like whatever some candles wh whatever but you can participate you can have the, that feeling that you're helping that you're doing something beyond yourself you are being totally selfless and people like that feeling they come back to it 
being useful, being more than just yourself for yourself. And this is also making our country stronger because when most of the people are involved in some volunteer work, the society is safe, the society is kind to all the others, the society is good uh, where people can grow, people grow being a volunteer because when you open your heart to someone, it becomes even bigger, you're kinder, you are smarter, you are, I don't know, you're better, <laughs> totally better. I, I, I became a volunteer when I was like 16, this was my first experience and I'm a better person due to that all the time. It fills me stronger, it fills me with, it feeds me with energy, even doing like some, I don't know, family festival in a park where there are some board games for families and you just engage, the, like the kids always run towards some games, that's obvious. When you engage like the moms and the dads and this is fun and the dads have fun and you see the dads bonding with their children because in Ukraine usually the mom is the one who is with the children and you see the dad bond and get interested and get involved and even when both parents get involved and forget about the child and play by themselves that's also great that the family experience the emotions they have they share this is amazing it had, this volunteering experience had nothing to do with uh, with uh, war or whatever no one was like greatly in need i did not save someone but i did some good and I f felt really good about what I'm doing. Yeah. So this war is still making our country stronger. And this is what I want to focus. I, I don't want to keep thinking about everyone we are losing. I, I just, I'm not ready yet to process that. I just want to focus on, on the good stuff now. And I keep thinking of more and more reason to feel good. Every time, uh, time I see something, this is nice, that is inspiring. I, I, I do it. I, I say the, the cats because the cats not it's not a person. It's not ten but people not twenty, it's just a cat. But still I save the cat. I, I made the world a little better place better place for that cat. You've saved twelve cat twelve cats. <laughs> Am I a bad person because I don't feel um with the American nurse I used to work with early in the war she's like no you have to go visit that that civilian casualty because she's on the floor why why i have to go visit her uh, i can clean the surgery i can have a cigarette with the doctor ask questions get ready for the next one uh and i thought you know i'm bad because i don't feel you know and uh but no there's time we're, we're just just doing 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 and um so in time we can feel in time the, chil the children can always feel. Um, and I thought I was a, like, I thought it was wrong, but like you were always doing. And uh, it brings me back to the thing when now you were in a famous photo of the war. Uh, I, I don't know of a more appropriate word. Uh, and I seen that was my friend who was there in Kostantinivka when the Peters drop a missile and kill our people. That was my friend there. And, and I was not scared or angry. I was just proud. That's my friend there. So. Um, this is what you should be feeling. This is the only way to survive the war. To, to feel proud, to feel happy for some, someone, uh, to feel some love. This is uh, the, the, the pain, it fades. The pain really fades over the years. The hatred, it burns out. You you can hate someone for, for some period of time, but it also, it burns uh, it burns you, this hate. You cannot feel hate for like two, two years. That's not normal. And the grief, the pain, it all goes away. This is what stays. Love stays. Love, it's true. it stays. This is what you can feel all the time, safely. This is uh, for, safely for your mental health. Uh, this is what can help you from day to day, from time to time, time to time. I don't know. This sounds like some <laughs> TikTok videos, but find find a thing to be grateful for today. Uh, find a thing you wanna laugh at today. I don't know, pass patron. 
<laughs> and the stuff. This is why we have so so much of that stuff, like Pes Patron yeah. during the war, because we celebrate need, a dog, yeah. Ce celebrate a chicken. We we need it. We need this stuff. We we celebrated figurines once. Like, not even we celebrated figurines of chickens. Seriously, not even we had a real chicken and then the figurines. I feel really privileged to n not not only you but many people. Uh, I meet in Donbass. Privilege to be your friend. It's really nice you're here. We 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 need we need you. We need lots of you. We want people to come here, to stay here. We because you you bring the you bring the kindness. You you come with love. You mm -hmm. come with hatred. You come with love. Uh, and you come with optimism in, and you come with believing that uh, it can end it can end well for us that we can win that we are supported that the whole, whole world still believes that uh, that we are winning and they, I, I want to feel connected like to I don't know a housewife in Minnesota I, I want to stay in touch with her I, I have a public on Instagram a page it, like corporate beach and stuff it's like fun memes about uh, the work in the office and I stay in touch with these girls sometimes because it, it brings me joy it brings me luck they they donate to my PayPal sometimes not it's not deciding everything this money it's no. not like huge money no but but I when you got your EcoFlow yeah. when you got your Starlink yeah I, I I stay in touch with them and this is nice because I I I know they're still there they remember they wish us well they wish us to win and I want to stay in touch with people with Americans Canadians Brazilians Australians whoever I that's easier for me to stay in touch with people with people who speak English because I can speak only only English. I would, it would be hard to, to, to stay like with Japanese people in touch. <laughs> it's gonna be a challenge. But uh, it's nice. It, it's really nice and it, it brightens your day. It, it really does. It, it, it does. Of course and it does. It, and when there is a stranger, uh, a foreigner, and I can and I have time to talk to him and help him in any way, I always do that because I want you to feel welcome. I want you to feel like in your place. I want you to be. I will often start stop talking Ukrainian or Russian with someone I was speaking and start to, 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 talking English and ignore <laughs> the one who doesn't because I want you to feel privileged. I want you to be, to feel like everyone wants to speak with you. You should feel like uh, superstars here. And you, should, you you really should. And it's easy it's easy to make you feel like that. And this is important for you. This is how it should be. This mm -hmm. is really how it should be. And just like me with my, my hundred words, uh, I I say babushka and sabachka and I mean a lot of a lot people of laugh. foreigners say babushka and you always laugh. The, it's our favorite is, word. This is funny. It's only the it's only the people not in the war uh, in the West who say, No, you must say babusia and they're like, fuck off, I'm in Donbass. Where are you? Where are you? Babushka is a funny word to us. This is really like it's a funny word. It, it's funny. <laughs> if you, we, if we can give a dog a medal, I can say I can say I can say grandmother in the lang in the funniest word. But why not? Why not? Asking those questions, talking about them, feeling vulnerable by asking those questions. Am I, am I the only crazy person here, or there are others? You you help me. Because I talked about that, I never talk about that as well. I ask myself, and I talk to myself, not not to people. And you help yourself, and you help others, maybe who's watching you. And this is important to talk about that. Mental health is important. Uh, yes, the artillery is important in war, but the mental health wins wars. The one who is resilient, uh, the one who is ready to continue to go on in such wars the, the, someone gives up at some point someone give, gives up and it shouldn't be us it should be them no we shouldn't we shouldn't be sad we should continue regardless of situation 
to always be looking for absolute advantage. When we are winning, how we can win more. When we are losing, how we can turn this into an advantage to win more. And this is a winning strategy. Thank you. And guys, please donate to, to this guy. Donate. Uh, I'll share your stuff too, but uh, I, I have to be completely honest. I will not edit this. Any of the girls uh, in my who work with me and I share their social media, you will get at least five messages from creeps. And you are quite attractive woman, so you might get 10 to 20. But, but most people will only share love. Do you really think I have never got a message from creep before in my life? No. It's going to be a first. <laughs> I've only had a couple crazy women, but uh, I am I am very what you call niche. I'm I, not, I, I'm not I for mass appeal. I even get messages from creeps when I try to put cats in homes. So that's like you expose yourself to that. You 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 can you can, you're in third assault, and I'm worried that you can't handle internet creeps. I can. Fuck me. I, I no no I can I really can like I I could do it before I I, I can. You just go click. I'm gonna offer them a cat. Offer them a cat. I yeah. don't have currently a cat to promote, but I'm gonna pick any cat here and just give them a cat. <laughs>